Hi, um, my name is Kern Adgeist. I'm a grade 12 student in the visual arts program at ESA. And I'm here to talk to you about the way that I break down a question or statement to give you an insight into the way that I view the world. But first, let me show you some of the work that I've um, created over the years and give you a bit more background about myself. Um, my first series that I'm uh, going to show you is called Delicacy. It's a series of cattle bones. It's a series of cattle bones in which I have transferred on a def Delft blue pattern, uh, a plate pattern. The idea for this series came to me in grade nine when I was talking about common objects in class. I decided to pick a random, uh, a random object in my house and research it. I ended up looking into plates, specifically into the idea that uh, China used to be made out of cattle bones. Um, and I began playing around with that idea of using bones um, to make plates. I came to the conclusion to try and recreate this process of bone china in some way, but keep the original beauty of the bones themselves. Um, my next work is a series of illustrations of animal skeletons. I've always been drawn to the idea of evolution and the development of life. And with this series, I explore the development, but through my own visions. I've illustrated a series of animal skeletons of my own creation, and they've been born from an assemblance of separate animals, some altered, some rearranged, all to form new creatures that aren't feasible, but enough ties to reality to be believable. Continuing, continuing with this principle of life as a subject matter, I decided to tie it into the medium for my next work. Um, and I created a set of uh, moldy clocks. Um, I used a set of mantel clocks and I grew mold on them to stop them from working. Touching on subjects such as life, death, natural and unnatural destruction and decomposition, as well as natural versus man-made. And here you can see um, that the hands of the clock are scraping part of the mold off since uh, they were still working at the time. Um, and then continuing with that experimentation of using mold as a medium, I uh, then wanted to grow mold on something that was still living. So I came up with this series of moldy flowers. Um, and so this was mainly just more of an experimental piece to see how far I could take this medium of mold. Um, and so it's all uh, documented through photography because these flowers decomposed very quickly. Um, so, yeah, so my next piece is a work in progress responding to an assignment given to me um, by a university that I'm applying to next year. The assignment was to create a piece of how you are partially or completely incorporated into a natural or industrial environment. To break down this statement, oops, sorry. To break down this statement, I pick out what I believe to be the key words. The first one being you, next one being incorporated, and the third main key word is environment. Then comes the analysis of each individual words. To start, I would ask myself, who are you? Well, who am I? I'm Kern Adigeist, student at ESA, visual arts department. Um, the next question would be, well, what are you? Well, by definition, we're all humans. But what makes us different from each other? Now, I believe that one aspect of that would be consciousness. Um, the Oxford Dictionary defines consciousness as the fact of awareness by the mind of itself and the world. So in a sense, it's the ability of one's own self and surroundings, oh, ability to be aware of one's own self and surroundings. This means that consciousness is not only about the first key word, you, but also about environment. Then I started researching into the history of consciousness, and I learned that consciousness evolved over time as we gained more knowledge of the world and became more aware of ourselves and our surrounding environment. For simplicity, I break, that, I break it down into three separate levels. Initial, partial, and complete consciousness of oneself and surroundings. To help explain the levels of consciousness further, I came up with a metaphor, and I'm going to call it the dark room metaphor. 
The initial level of consciousness is like being in a dark room. You have no knowledge of where the walls are or if there are even any doors. You can't see, hear, or smell anything. And you have no idea what's going on outside of that room or what's in the room with you. All you know is that you're in a dark room. The second or partial level of consciousness comes along with the, the idea that you now know the knowledge of what this dark room uh, or that this dark room is within a house. That also comes along with the knowledge of uh, the concept of a house. So you know that houses have rooms connected through doorways and so you can assume that there are other rooms outside of the room that you're in. A kitchen, dining room, living room, bedrooms, bathrooms. You assume that all these other rooms are somewhere outside of your room, but you have no idea where this dark room is situated in the house. So you have no idea how to get to any of the other rooms. And that, that's the partial level of consciousness. Now, the complete level of consciousness, the third level, you know everything there is to know about the house and the dark room you're in. So much so that you could make your way to the kitchen, cook a meal in the dark, you could go to the, sit on the couch in the living room. You can find your, uh, the bathroom, bedrooms, all in the dark. And at this point, you are fully aware of where you are in the house and uh, the surroundings of, the, of your, yourself. In other words, you are, you are completely incorporated into your environment. Now, I have no reason to believe that as, uh, that we as the human race are incapable of achieving this level of consciousness within the universe. However, at this state in time, we can only be partially incorporated into the, into the universe because we don't have all of the knowledge of everything. So to complete this assignment, I have to now distinguish between natural or industrial environment. Um, and in their strict definitions, they aren't equal opposites. My association with industrial is much more limited than that of natural. So I interpreted industrial more in the sense of cultural, um, which is uh, essentially um, an environment that is driven by a society. Um, so now for the visual piece, I conclude that you are partially incorporated in a cultural environment. And next will be the visual piece that I've created for this project. Now, this image represents partial incorporation of consciousness with the book being the cultural environment because it's no, not a natural occurrence, a book. Um, and it's, it's partial uh, consciousness because we don't know all of the information about the book. We know some, we know that's a book and you can see that, but we can't pick it up, we can't feel it, smell it, open it up and read it. We may assume that this book is one that we know, but we have no way to prove that because part of the name is blacked out and you can't open it and see that it actually might be a book or it could just be blank pages on the inside. So now the core of this piece is that, uh, and this philosophy that I want to share with you guys is that we may make assumptions about what we see here in the world or everywhere, but if we don't have all of the information, we can't fully prove that our assumptions are correct. Thank you.